Now, what is going on, my Tiberius tribe? I'm here to tell you guys that it is happening. It is slowly, slowly happening. I am becoming a SIG fanboy. Start off with my P365. I uh, mutated it to a 365 with the XL grip. Slides out being milled right now for a red dot. Then it uh, turned into the X5 Legion with the loophole delta point in the Enforce Wild 2, which is a great, great gun. And now I've been reviewing a SIG MPX and I am absolutely positively in love with this pistol caliber carbine. So this is an older version of the MPX, just so you know here. The newer Gen 2 ones that came out, I believe, last year have a couple differences. The newer ones are only available in a 4.5 inch model, which is called the K, a PCC version, which is the 16 inch barrel, and then a little tiny copperhead that only has a three and a half inch barrel. Uh, another difference is the newer ones have a significantly better trigger and the rail on the new ones is M-Lock instead of key mod. Now this SIG MPX was loaned to me by one of my friends at the BA Training Academy. The BA Training Academy is a bunch of guys who get together um, at the range every single Sunday here in Rhode Island and it, they run some really really good legit trainings. They do different trainings every week whether it be pistol, rifle, whatever they want to work on. Uh, they go to a range with a plan and they all try to make themselves better versions of who they are today. As always, let's start at the bottom here and work our way forward. The brace on this particular SIG MPX is made by SB Tactical. There is a button here on top where you can slide it back and forth to open and close it. And there is a position in the middle if you want to rock it right there. The firearm is such a tight, uh, short length of pull. I think most people are going to keep it all the way out. That's going to be my preferred um, length of pull. Um, if you notice inside the upper, there are two channels that the uh, slide goes, uh, that the brace will slide right into. So it's very, very compact, very small. If you don't like this particular brace, there's a lot of different ones you can get. There's folders, there's a ton of aftermarket accessories for the MPX, whether that be braces or pretty much anything else. Um, one of the nice things I think SIG started was this pick rail on the back of the firearm. The way the brace hooks to the firearm is just a Picatinny rail. Um, so not only can you move it up or down a tiny bit, it makes it a very, very universal mounting system. Uh, on the back here, this sling is from Ferro Concepts. Now, I'm a huge fan of Ferro Concepts slings. It's nicely padded in the back here, has a great um, adjustability. Uh, Ferro Concepts slings and their plate carriers are both fantastic. On the bottom of the firearm right here, you do see there is a QD mount. Uh, that's the way the sling was hooked to this particular rifle. And obviously you can put a second one out here if you wanna run it as a two point. Um, the charging handle on the SIG MPX is a proprietary charging handle, so you can't put a standard AR-15 charging handle on here. This charging handle is okay. I'll let you look at it a little bit closer when we take the gun apart. Uh, it is ambi, which is good. It's okay, it's not great. I think if this was my um, uh, pistol caliber carbine, I may consider upgrading the charging handle to something like a, a Radian. Radian makes some really, really good charging handles. Unlike the charging handle, I am a pretty big fan of the grip. It is a SIG proprietary grip. If you don't like this particular one, you can swap it out for another uh, standard AR-15 grip. Now the texture on here um, is not a factory texture. The owner of this particular uh, firearm had somebody stipple it, um, but I will say the shape and the palm swell is very, very good. More than anything else, it has that locking compartment on the bottom, which is always good for my range snacks. Next, let's talk about the trigger. The trigger is okay. It's not bad. It's okay. It is very, very heavy. It is a short single stage trigger with very, very, very little take up and a very short reset, but it is slightly on the heavier side. Again, the newer versions have a really sweet Timney trigger, so you don't have to worry about it unless you're looking at getting a Gen 1 mod. So taking a look at it here, like I said, there's just no take up. That's where it breaks. Oops, sorry. And then your reset. So again, there's not much travel to it at all. It's a very, very short trigger, but it's here on the heavy side. Again, I am a trigger snob, so I probably care a little bit more than most people, but I think it's a little heavy. Um, the new one has fixed that issue once again. Now your controls, there's a lot going on about the controls and we're gonna talk about this for a second. 
Even the ambi controls have ambi controls. It's one of those rifles where everything is ambi. So you have a very standard magazine release right here, like an AR-15. And then on the left side, you have another magazine release right here. So if you are a lefty, if you're shooting backwards or awkward positions, you do have another magazine release right there, which is great. Your safety is also ambi. On the Gen 1, it is the exact same size on both sides of the gun. I believe on the Gen 2, I couldn't confirm this, that the right side safety is slightly smaller. Um, I read that some people say that the uh, ambi safety selector gets in their way, but if you look, I'm not even close. This ambi selector is small enough where it doesn't get in my way or impede my trigger finger uh, in any way. The really interesting part is the bolt release. So on this side of the gun, it's a very standard uh, bolt catch and bolt release, no different from an AR-15, but you have a second bolt release right here. Um, which is very, very interesting because I don't have a ton of experience with bolt, bolt releases like this. Maybe the POF Renegade I reviewed, that's about it. So here's my question for you as I go through this. What are your thoughts on having a bolt release on both sides of the gun? Would you use it? And let me ask you this. Let me tell you why I say this. If you are on a platform like this that has it and you get used to using it and you go to your AR-15 or another platform that doesn't have it, do you have any concerns about getting used to something and then that's not there on another platform? I personally think I would stick with the standard bolt release. Um, just because it carries through to every platform that I use. But I want to know your opinion. Drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts. So this is what I did with the bolt release. I used um, the standard bolt release on this side. And I did 10 magazine exchanges. Putting, putting the magazine in. Coming up and pushing that button and then firing. Then I did 20 magazine exchanges. Putting the magazine in. Using my trigger finger right here to drop the bolt and then get back on target. I did more with this one because I'm not as familiar with it and I don't use them as much. And I will say, using the bolt release here on the right side, um, I was about a quarter to almost half of a second faster uh, using this second bolt release. Next, let's talk about these magazines. I like almost everything about the SIG MPX magazines. Uh, 30 rounds is a good capacity. The texture and the grip on the magazines is very, very good. I like that. The steel reinforced feed ramps is good. And now they do uh, have a very good reputation of being reliable magazines. The thing I don't like about it, as you can probably guess if you know anything about the MPX, is going to be the price. These magazines come in around $60. I just checked two seconds ago, Gun Mag Warehouse, $59.99. Uh, maybe you can get them more or less, but in that price range. When there's other good quality pistol caliber carbines like the CMMG Banshees, the pistol caliber ones, they take Glock mags. Glock mags are fairly inexpensive and very, very plentiful. If you look at the CZ Scorpion, again, those magazines are now very, very reliable and they're like 20 bucks. Um, and you can get the Palmetto State Armory versions for even less. So I like the magazine and I understand you do pay for quality. I just wish SIG could figure out a way to make them a little bit more affordable. So both the lower and the upper on these firearms are 7075 T6 aluminum, as you would expect. Uh, it has a pretty nice uh, flared magwell, which will help with your magazine insertions. Uh, as I said earlier, the upper has these two cutouts on here that the brace can slide right into. It makes helps make it very, very compact. Now the rail on the top actually goes all the way from here to here. It doesn't end like an AR-15 right here, and it's a very, very sturdy rail. And then the hand, the handguard part of the rail is just this space right here, this little tiny space. So it's a little bit different than most, like in, especially like an AR-15 or anything. Uh, on top, my buddy has a Trijicon MRO, which has been very, very good, and I think it's kind of a, a good optic for a uh, format, a, a pistol caliber carbine like this. Um, the handguard on this one, again, is older. You have key mod 369 and even on the half positions. One more time, the newer one will be M-Lock at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock. Now, the barrels on these MPXs from Sig Sauer are excellent. They are cold hammer forged. They are very, very high quality, durable, and extremely accurate. For once, I went ahead and did a accuracy test for you, a bench rest test, which I hate doing. I find them painfully boring. But here's one at 25 yards, and then I did another one for you at 50 yards. 
As we open up this SIG MPX, opens up just like an AR-15. There's two pins that you pull out and it opens right up. Um, this is a gas piston gun that fires from a closed but uh, rotating bolt. So what that means is when you shoot, whoa, <laughs> when you shoot, there's a valve in there that siphons off a little bit of the gas, drives a piston to the rear. The bolt has to rotate uh, a little bit before it can be uh, driven to the rear to eject the round and load the next one in. And all of those actions lead to a very, very durable and reliable gun, even if it's dirty, and also leads to a very low felt recoiling gun. This is one of the softest shooting pistol caliber carbines that I've ever shot, ever shot. Excuse me, I can't speak. Um, so we're gonna pull on the charging handle. We'll take our bolt, bolt carrier out with the recoil spring. First, this is the charging handle I mentioned. Again, it's not bad. I like it that it's ambi, but I don't quite love it. Again, a Radian would probably uh, be a good idea in this firearm. So your bolt and your bolt carrier is one piece all with the recoil spring, uh, kind of similar to an AR-15. And if you look close, this thing is absolutely filthy. It was a little bit dirty when I got it. And then I shot several hundred rounds of all different types of ammo. And right now it's a lot of cheaper ammo. So it is really, really dirty, which is a good thing uh, to let us know that, that this one is definitely durable and reliable. But I have some cleaning to do before I give it back to my friend from the BA Academy. So I'm gonna leave the bolt and the bolt carrier out. I'll hit it with some breakthrough clean and get it all uh, cleaned up for him. Now as far as pros of these rifle, I'm gonna say the biggest pro is the fit and finish and the quality of the firearm, firearm overall. It seems like SIG built these to a uh, very high duty standards, whether that be police or military or whatever type of standard a uh, very, very high standard. With the gas piston system and the rotating bolt, not only is it a very, very reliable platform, it's also a uh, very, very low felt recoil. So these are durable, reliable, and a pleasure to shoot at the same time. I uh, know these have been out for a while, so aftermarket support is very, very good. I love all of the ambi controls. Uh, SIG did a really, really good job with the controls. The only major con I have is gonna be the price of the magazines. 60 bucks a pop is kind of tough to swallow, especially um, if you're using these for a defense and you wanna get you know, five to 10 magazines, that's a lot of money. Uh, this particular one with key mod and this trigger is not great. I know most people want M-Lock and a better trigger, but again, this is the previous version. The newer version will have a significantly better trigger for you. Uh, as far as uses, there is a ton of uses you could, uh, things you could use this for. Again, because it's built to that higher duty grade, any type of personal or home defense, this would be absolutely perfect for. Especially if you need something concealable, you put the brace in, the new one with the four and a half inch barrel, very, very easy to conceal, whether that be uh, in a backpack or a truck gun or whatever scenario you wanna come up with. They're very, very easy to conceal a pistol like this. Um, the longer version, the 16 inch, would be absolutely perfect for competitions. You know, you could use this one for competitions, but it is a little on the short side, so the 16 inch one would probably be a little bit better off. Um, overall, I love the SIG MPXs. I will give them a solid A. Um, they're not cheap. Um, they're on the more expensive side of pistol caliber carbines, but I definitely think you get what you pay for when it comes to this. Uh, one more time, let me thank my friend from the BA Training Academy. Very, very nice of him to let me play with his SIG MPX for a little while, and I greatly, greatly appreciate that. And I also greatly, greatly appreciate you guys for watching. If you are looking to support the channel, there is many, many ways you can do so. Just a quick like, or a comment really, really helps me out way more than you can even imagine. If you wanna know what reviews we have coming out next, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you will hopefully get notified when I come out with a new video. If you would like to know what those videos are in real time, please consider liking me on Instagram or on Facebook. The links to both of those are down in the video description. Last but certainly not least, we do have three channel sponsors, M2 Tactical Solutions Holsters, Howling Beard Company, and Breakthrough Clean. Discount code for all three of those is Tiberius, and they will save you between 10 and 20%. One more time, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace.